Last year, I had a girl that came into my office that undeniably hated me. She walked into my office and she looked at me and she pointed her finger at me and she said these words. She said, don't make me mad or I'll knock your head off. (laughs) And I'm leaving out the F words for your ears tonight. (laughs) And her mother conveniently left the room (laughs) and she left me and her princess daughter alone in this room. And I had one of those moments out of a, as a professional where every strategy that I had ever been taught flashed through my mind. And none of the outcomes were favourable. <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with this girl? And it was a Monday morning and I looked at her and in my mind I thought, good morning to you, darling. What am I going to do with you? But call it a stroke of genius, I looked at her and I thought, you know, using conventional methods right now is just not going to work. (laughs) And so I looked at her and I said, Julia, I said, what do you really hate about counselling centres and people like me? And she had not only come in and aggressively attacked me, she had purposely gone and sat in my chair. So she was very dedicated to the art of being a teenager. She had gone in and she'd sat in my chair. She'd put her um, earpieces in, you know, her... um, Yeah, yeah, in her ears and her thumbs were texting furiously and she hadn't even looked at me again. And um, I said to her, Julia... I pulled one of them out of her hair. I said, what do you hate about counselling centres like me? And she said, can you all block your ears a minute? She said, you're all effing gay. I said, oh. And so I just sat there for a minute. I thought, what am I going to say back to this? And I said, whoa. I said, this is brilliant. And she looked at me for a minute and she flicked up her eyes for the first time in the whole conversation. I said, no, 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 this is brilliant. And she looked at me like, you are absolutely out of your mind, love. I said, look, I really want to start a counselling centre. And I want to start it for kids like you. And I said, hang on a second. Can you just hold your thought there? I said, hang on. I need a pen and paper. So I ran out of the room and I went and got the biggest notebook I could find. I got the chunkiest thing I could find and I got a pen. And I came running back into the room and I pulled my chair up next to my chair. And I opened this page up and I said, go for it. I said, tell me what you really hate about people like me. And she had a captive audience. She sat up. She pulled both of these things out of her ears. And you know what she told me? She told me this. She said, you're all dorks. And I made sure I didn't flinch. She said, these places all smell weird. And they all look the same. And you all have photos on your fam- of your family on your desk. And that makes me sick. And I hate offices. I like being outside where I can smoke. And mum makes me come here, which I hate even more. And every time mum comes here, she cries. And people like you always ask me how I feel and I don't want to talk about how I feel. And it really irritates me because you people always ask the same questions. And today I still have my notes from Julia. And I have been very purposefully taking notes from girls like Julia for a very long time. Because I believe girls like Julia and girls like Caitlin need a really special service that's going to engage them. And in amongst the FUs and the this and the that, what they're actually telling us is there's a very special way to engage teenagers. And When I brought Julia to the end of that session, I said to her, you know what, if you really hate places like this, why don't we just get out of here? Why don't we just go and get a milkshake? And she went, oh, all right. 
So I took her over the road. We went and got a milkshake. And an hour later, I brought her back to her mother. And her mother grabbed hold of my hand like this. Give me your hand, Liz. She grabbed hold of my hand and she started weeping, which Julia hated. (laughs) She was so irritated and so annoyed. I sent her to the car and her mum wouldn't let go of my hand and I was trying to let go and she just wouldn't let go. And she kept saying this to me. She kept saying over and over, how did you just do that? How did you just do that? And with tears streaming down her face, she kept asking me, how did you just do that? My daughter said she wasn't going to talk to you. I had to drag her here. I said, really? I missed that bit. (laughs) She's never talked to anyone like that before. How did you just do that? And you know, I, I bundled them in the car and they left. And I went back in the office and I shut the door. And I've never told anyone this, but I actually did a little victory lap in my office. <laughs> it was kind of team one, Michelle. Yeah, you know. Because you know what I did? You know what happened that day? There was a girl on the way to being a drug addict that I managed to push this way. And that's a really rewarding feeling. At still 13 years on, I get an incredible buzz from that. And what schools and parents and teachers don't realise, it's my little secret, is the biggest compliment I can ever get is, how did you just do that? And you know what I believe Kalanga needs and deserves is a clinic for kids, a how did you just do that clinic? that has staff that are amazing with teenagers and families. It's a how did you just do that place for kids that has that extra factor that knows how to engage young people. And I know here tonight I have a lot of professionals here, I have a lot of volunteers here that are are ready to engage in this vision. If you would just give me another five minutes of your time, I'd love to just speak to you about the logistics of, of how I see this service happening. Cheryl, would you mind just putting that PowerPoint up for me right there now? You know, I did meet with Dacob and State High School when I first came into this area, and my aim tonight was to raise enough money to get a program into their school. But as I began to consult with the community, the need in this area just really overtook me. And the amount of people um, in this community that started talking and the government and the Centrelink and the docks, um, the, you know, the um, headspace, the CAG, the different representatives I was talking to, the need is greater than just a program in a school. We need a youth-based service in this area and and I'm putting my hand up to do it and I think we have the skill set here to do it. What I would love to do is to provide a multi-dimensional clinic, which means we could have children, um, teenagers here for up to two years of their life that would transition through different services. Um, I would love to provide clinical psychologists and social workers that we could put kids through on uh, mental health plans, specialist counsellors, and then um, mentors, small group programs and after school programs, and provide just a transition of services for young people. Um, Not all young people want to sit in an office and talk. It made Julia sick. But some young people are ready for that. And at different stages, they're ready for different things. Thanks, Cheryl, if you can just change that. I'm very passionate about mental health in young people. I think the earlier it is picked up and treated, the better. And it can be a real challenge for parents that have young people suffering with eating disorders and self-harm and depression and anxiety. And I think there is a lot of misdiagnosis and parents really deserve um, proper care in this area. Um, So thank you, Cheryl, if you can turn the slide again. Mentors, um, we have a a really great program that we can structure mentoring around. You know, some boys just want to play basketball with a a role model, but we also do have a structured program, a life skills program that we can transition young people through. 
And I think for $20 a session, we can actually have a really affordable service. And then in hardship cases, we can run fundraising events like this. And we can have people put in, just say, look, $20 a week, we could have a 12-week program. People could cough up 300, 500 bucks and have a young person go through a mentoring program for three to six months. Thanks, Cheryl. Small group programs. Liz Walker, would you stand up for me? Here she is over here. Yay. Liz and I have got, um, gotten to know each other really well over the past six months and she's the head of the Youth Health and Wellbeing Project. Is that correct? Well, Youth Wellbeing Project. And her program, Get a Grip Teens, is a, um, a healthy sexuality program. And when I first met with Liz, I was so impressed with the research base of this program and I am really proud to be able to run it from our base here but also be able to offer it to schools as well. It's an excellent program. And Youth Excel has also um, designed a program especially for the needs of Dacobin. What um, the police and different communities um, representatives are telling me is that respect in respectful relationships is an issue in Dacobin and we've designed a program called Respectful Relationships that we're going to be running from the centre here as well. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, Donna, would you like to stand up? This lady's amazing. She's come on board as well. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Donna has run um, a program called Connect where she has offered parent presentations and workshops for the past two years. And Donna has done an incredible job at gathering parents. She's had up to 300 parents come to these presentations and workshops. Now, that is no mean feat. It is a big deal to get over 30 parents together at schools. It is a big deal. And Donna is actually coming on board to work with us at Youth Excel to run that arm of it. And we are just really privileged to have her on board with this. And I'm so excited to be able to work with someone so dynamic and so motivated in this area. We are very privileged to have you, Donna. So thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. I think the key is engagement. Um, we would love to, and Trevor and I are going to be working really hard on this, but we would love to provide a case manager who is on site that is um, going to be here to, um, as students, as teenagers come to the centre here, to be able to um, register them as part of um, the centre, to look at their needs, to look at which one of these programs fits them best and to make sure they're not just disengaging without being flagged. So we're not having just a kid turn up to a few sessions and then they're gone and no one knows they're gone that they've actually got a case manager that's going to care and follow them up and make sure they've got the right program that fits them. And if at any time they're in a counselling service and it's not working for them, they've got someone else to go to. Um, and this case manager's job would also be to organise after school activities. Let's get PCYC in here and do some great things for the kids after school. Let's get some hip hop dance classes here. Let's get some graffiti art classes here. Let's get some things for our kids in Kalanga to do after school as well to help that engagement process and then follow them into some good mentoring services as well. Thank you. What are we waiting for to set this up? Guys, we honestly just need the setup cost, which is the hard cost that takes to get couches and computers for kids to sit on when they come in. Um, at the moment, they're sitting on a 70s couch that's got a really big dip in it, and I'm waiting for someone to fall through it. Sometimes the big dads come in and I'm just going, are you going to be the one that falls through that couch? <laughs> Um, especially if, you know, docs and Centrelink start referring kids and, and we're getting professionals on board. We need some decent furniture in there. We've got three rooms operational now. They need to be decked out right. We need a computer. Um, so the setup costs of those things need, need to be done. And literally, once they're done, we have got good staff lined up, ready to go. The only staff we are waiting on is a head psychologist that will head this thing up. And it is going to cost, it is going to take an upfront cost of um, a psychologist wage to carry that through for six months. And then this service is going to be sustainable. We can tap into um, mental health rebates, Medicare, 
um, mental health plans for this um, and an annual fundraiser should really help the hardship cases that come through mentoring. The exciting thing about this is that Brisbane Mines are on board. We have all the right people on board to make this thing sustainable. So it's a very exciting thing, I think, for Kalanga to be able to embrace. Thank you, Cheryl. Last one. Here we go. What's going to make it sustainable? This is really the important thing with projects like this. Um, affordable rates for families. We've covered that with our small groups, with our mentoring, with our mental health plans. Brisbane Mines want to take us on board, which means all the GPs in the area will have the opportunity to refer kids straight to this clinic. Um, Medigit, bear, Medicare rebates for our kids. Um, support from referring bodies like Centrelink, Docs, Schools, Brisbane Mines, Alternative Learning and Youth Services. A steady flow of incredible volunteers, like you've seen, pull this night off tonight. Um, we do need volunteers for receptionists, and I know there's some of you here tonight that are toying with that idea. We need you. Um, ladies on the front desk that are passionate about young people that will pick up the phone and be a friendly voice to families. We need you one day a week if you can put up your hand for me in three month blocks. I know, I could almost say put up your hand now and you're ready to go, aren't you? Put it on the donation card tonight and I will be ringing you. So that would be awesome. Steady flow of volunteers to help with mentoring, fundraising and being on that reception desk for us. And look, I think accountability to a board of management to help keep this project on track and we've got all those things to make it happen. So can I ask you tonight, I'm going to ask you to, to put your hand in your wallet, if everyone does something, if everyone does what they can, and if you had a dollar figure in mind and you came tonight with a dollar figure in your mind, can you consider doubling it for us? <laughs> Because really, at the end of the day, when you walk out that door, it probably won't hurt you that much and it will make a huge difference to us. It will make a huge difference to the lives of young people. You're not just buying couches. You're buying a place that young people will sit and feel safe and share their life with someone for the next probably 10 years. This is a huge thing. So let me ask you just to get on board and I just so appreciate everyone coming out. What a great night, hey? What a great night, hey? Yay!